everybody, I'm Tyler Larson here from More Flight Snail Trail 4x4, NorCal 4x4 Rescue, and we're here today with Rubicon Trail Foundation's John Arns to Hello. talk about some of the equipment you might want to wear and bring with you while you're snow wheeling out on the Rubicon. Let's start, I mean, there, there's a lot of different options out there. Clothing is clothing, right? We as humans don't survive very well in sub-freezing temperatures. Without clothing. Without clothing. Um, to keep us warm. So um, let's just start at kind of what we're wearing here at our feet. Um, and number one thing I think is the most important for us as humans is our feet and making sure those stay in good condition for us. So yeah. how, do we, how do we do that, John? If we don't have hands and we don't have arms, we can still walk out if we have feet. <laughs> there we go. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how we do that is having a waterproof and insulated boots. There's a lots of different ways to do that in the in the old days, we used to use leather boots and put waterproofing compounds on them. Then Gore-Tex boots came out. Now most people that snowmobile a lot are wearing a plastic boot. Uh -huh. And um, and now they have fantastic new lacing systems mm -hmm. and um, triple insulated uh, Gore-Tex yeah. liners. And, yeah. and uh, yeah. the boots that I'm wearing are from Climb. They're a snowmobiling company. They're uh, plastic, they're waterproof they're breathable and they're insulated they have a pretty cool lace system that doesn't get jammed up with ice and snow and is easy to operate with one hand and, and cold hands and cold That's hands kind of nice about them and cold hands yeah mm -hmm. and they have a snap that holds the pant onto the boot so if you're walking in four feet of snow your pants don't pull up to your knee and get yeah. a bunch of snow down your boot have you ever had that happen oh yeah Yep, it sucks. <laughs> what kind of boots are you wearing? I've got some really neat ones. It's a it's a rubberized plastic um, for the main boot, almost like a rain boot would be, right? Sure. So complete waterproofing um, up into a really high insulated boot area. So they're not probably as breathable as yours, but they are super warm and super waterproof. So do you um, think it's important to keep your socks dry? Well, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And that's one of the issues I come across with my boots is that at the end of the day, my feet are a little bit soaked from sweat, right? Um, but the cool thing, the nice thing about when you pair these boots with gaiters, so your, your pants and shoes have a really nice combo where your gaiters are kind of built into your pants and your boots have this really neat little strap to connect it all together. Um, I don't have that option and so my, I wear gaiters over that and it does the exact same thing, right? It keeps snow from getting up into your boot and keeps the wet out of your boot, um, keeps the cold out of your feet as much as possible. Yeah, and I can see the strap in the clip that holds your mm -hmm. gaiters together mm -hmm. and make your boot and your pant one system. Exactly. Yep, so that's really cool. I'm a huge proponent of gaiters when we're out on the trail. Anytime we go snow wheeling, that's my number one thing I grab for clothing is gaiters and boots. Um, from there, we've got socks. And that's the next really big important thing because there's a lot of materials and clothing that, um, in my opinion, well, a lot of people's opinion, it's been proven, they just don't dry out and they don't retain warmth when they're wet. So you're talking about cotton. Cotton, exactly. Um, cotton, uh, polyesters, different polyesters in socks are really bad to wear as your socks inside your boots when you're out in the snow because they just don't retain heat at all when they're warm. Um, there's two uh, fibers that naturally occur that retain heat when they're wet. So wool and? Silk. Yep, so wool and silk. So I wear some really, really thick wool socks every time I go. And not only that, but I bring extras with me on every single trip. I, for every snow wheeling, snow camping, I bring two pairs of socks for every day that I'm out in the snow. I was just gonna say, what's your number? Cause two, yeah. is, my, two <laughs> is my number as well. Perfect. Two pairs of wool socks per day I'm wheeling. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, why is that, John? Uh, that's because they're gonna get wet once and you wanna alternate them and have them, and have them uh, dry while the other one's mm -hmm. wet. That's the first reason. The second reason is because even wool socks get sweat in them, and once they're sweaty, they're colder, so you wanna to switch to your new pair the next day. Yep, exactly. So have a rotating system for your wool socks to yep. dry one out while you're wearing the other one. That's right. Yep, I like it. Um, next step up from there, let's talk about uh, pants. Let's talk about pants. What are yeah. you wearing? I'm wearing a full-on snowmobile suit, Okay. which is fantastic. It's from a company called FXR. They do a ton of snowmobile stuff. 
Um, but I kind of think of when I'm going out snow wheeling, I want to think of who's the people that are the most cold the most often. And it's usually snowmobilers. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so snowmobile gear is awesome if you're going to be out multi days, even if it's one day out in the snow. You never know what's going to happen. You're going to be out in the snow at some point. You're going to be down on your knees, crawling under a rig, shoveling a rig out, something in snow. How many snow wheeling, real snow wheeling trips have you been on where you weren't out of the rig kneeling in the snow? I don't think there's been a single one. <laughs> I would agree with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so do these, do these have, yeah, perfect padding mm -hmm. in the knees. Yep. So same thing here, double insulated padding in the knees. I can kneel on snow for 20 minutes and not feel the snow. Yep, exactly. And that's super important. Yep. So having, um, the really nice thing about these is that they're mainly Gore-Tex. Mm -hmm. So they're super breathable, super water resistant. And there's a lot of uh, insulated layers to the suit, to your jackets, to your pants. Mm -hmm. um, that helps you keep you warm, keep you dry, but it also helps to breathe more too. And so um, good equipment will do all those three things for you. Keep you warm, warm, keep you dry, and help you breathe. Agreed. I'm wearing uh, Climb snowmobile gear. There you go. And uh, I'm wearing it. I, I kind of have a different plan. This is a two-piece, so it's a set of bibs and a, and a uh, jacket. Um, just a different philosophy and there's nothing wrong with either yep. one. Mm -hmm. uh, Gore-Tex, padded knees, um, it has um, waterproof zippers that can open for mm -hmm. um, to, to allow it to breathe if, if it gets warm out. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the jacket. Um, it's um, Gore-Tex, has lots of pockets and places to put things. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like about, uh, about Climb is that it has a lot of stretch right here. That doesn't uh -huh really that doesn't that's not because i need it <laughs> it's because it's future expansion <laughs> <laughs> no but I, but I can carry a i can carry a radio on my belt underneath it yeah um or whatever else a knife a gun whatever it is you carry on your belt yep it fits underneath the suit because it has that stretchable um yet breathing and waterproof area on it yeah Nice, I like it. I think that's a really key component about your outer layers. And that's kind of the next step we're gonna get into is layers. But really your outer layers, number one thing, they gotta be water resistant, waterproof as much as possible. And then from there, layering up, I'm a huge fan of layering up and wearing as many layers as you can, as you want. Um, How many layers are you wearing? Right now, oh gosh, on, from waist down I'm wearing three different layers, four layers, four layers. From my torso up, I'm wearing five layers right now. So I'm three and four. You're three and four now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Why, do, why is layering important when you're out here in the snow though? So layering is important when you're out in the snow because, because you need to regulate your heat. So if you're working, you don't want to get overheated mm -hmm. because that makes you sweat. And when you sweat, you, you get cold. On the other hand, if you're not moving around too much and it's 10 or 15 degrees out and snowing you want to have the water resistance but you also want to have all those layers on top of each other to keep you warm yep 100 percent. so being able to help regulate your body heat and so, your body temperature is a key when we're out here in, in snowy environments because right now we're going to get nice and warm i think this afternoon it's going to be beautiful but up here in the sierras out on the rubicon it gets cold at night and it, it drops does. quickly. So layering, awesome thing to do. Um, another big thing, what are we wearing here on our, on our hands here, John? We're wearing gloves and, yes. and people don't pay enough attention to the glove they buy. If they have a pair of gloves, yep. they go down to, you know, wherever and get a, a pair of um, gloves for the ski slope. They think they're good to go. Yep. You think that's so? No. I don't either. Absolutely not. I'm, I, I've come down to find that I love gloves for some reason. I have this, this love relationship with gloves and I've got a bunch of different gloves for a lot of different situations. Um, we talked about chainsaw gloves in another episode that we did. Um, the big thing I've found with warm gloves is that you want them to be water resistant, but the big thing that I'm a huge proponent of is wind resistance. Um, you'd be surprised how many gloves out there are, especially like ski gloves, 
that you'd think are gonna, they look super water resistant. They may have Gore-Tex on the outside, but they're not wind resistant. You know, the problem with them is they stitch them through. Mm -hmm. So the glove is stitched through and the, and the cold comes in through the stitching when it's windy. Mm -hmm. So so I agree with you. You can't buy, if you buy a stitched through glove, you'll find that it's cold, even though it looks puffy and warm. Mm -hmm. the, other, uh, the other thing that I like about gloves is you can Technology has come a long way in gloves. <laughs> Technology's come a long <laughs> Look, I have a switch on my glove, and you can run battery heated gloves, uh -huh. and they're uh, the bomb when you're sitting still. Yep. When you're not working, mm -hmm. and if you have a switch, you can set the heat level so, um, so if you're just out walking and not working with your hands on cold stuff, you can just keep them below setting. Mm -hmm. If you're working in the snow, doing a recovery and touching metal and touching mm -hmm. snow you can turn them up and your hands still stay warm yeah that's great i'm a um there's been a lot of advancements in heated clothing lately and they are phenomenal i have a heated jacket that i'll take out for snow camping i'll take it out during summertime because it dips down into you know 40s at night up here just for when you're sitting still exactly mm -hmm. it's great around the campfire i absolutely love it i'm getting a pair of heated gloves now after <laughs> <laughs> being out here with you today so um, the next thing up, we're working our way up here. We've got our heads, right? Oh yeah. What is a big thing about humans and, and our heads and how our heads affect our body temperatures? The big thing about humans and how our heads affect our body temperature is because we can lose 90% of our body heat through our bare head. Yes. That's amazing to me, but it's that's crazy. what I'm told. Yeah. It's crazy. We lose an extreme amount of heat, mainly because our brain is up here and our body wants to keep our brain working, right? So it runs all our blood up into our head. Exactly. And there you go. You lose a ton of heat from your head. So the big thing, I'm a big proponent of all of our jackets we bring out have a nice big insulated hood. The layers you can put on, you put up your layer. I'm going to pull mine up too. Okay. We all got layers yep. and we all got a hood with a there we go with a with a drip line on it that's mm -hmm. out in front of our layers yep that's big so layering and really protecting and keeping your head warm is a big thing i actually also carry a balaclavas with me which are phenomenal i love them so a ball a balaclava is a covering it's like a hood for your face that has eye holes and a nose hole and a mouth hole and it sounds like a halloween costume but it will really keep your head warm in a mm -hmm. blizzard yep absolutely so yeah, a balaclava um, is a great option. The other thing I like about balaclava is I've got ones that um, you can wear as kind of just a neck mm -hmm. gaiter almost that keeps your neck warm, and or you can it have over your it head up when you and need just it. have your the bottom of your face warm if you want to wear your beanie, or you can pull it all the way up and cover everything, Perfect. or just have it open and covering your head and have your face open. So you, you can adjust it kind of like layers. Exactly, it's a really cool piece of equipment that I'm a huge fan of bringing for snow wheeling. Another item that I bring that I notice a lot of people tend to forget sometimes is eye protection when we're out in the snow. Um, you've got some sunglasses here. Why do you bring sunglasses when we're out in the snow? The reason I bring sunglasses when I'm out in the snow is because when the sun is out and it's on the snow, the glare off the snow is tremendous and it can actually damage your eyes. So if a full day of snow wheeling in the bright sun in the spring, you can actually damage your eyes to the point where you can't see. Yeah. And you'll have to take a day off and before you can go home. And it's and it's hard on your eyes long term. While we're on that subject, mm -hmm. let's not forget about sunscreen. Yes, that's a big one that a lot of people forget when we're up. Winter time, it's cold. You don't think you're gonna be needing hot stuff that you typically see during the summer, but sunscreen's a big, big talking point up here. Yep, so you've been standing in the snow for 20 minutes. Are your feet cold? No. Mine either. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different options out there for clothing. We've got different options for sunglasses, head coverings, jackets, outerwear, layering options. Um, why, is there any benefit to spending more money or less money or, cause I mean, we've got ranging in all sorts of things, a full Gore-Tex snowmobile suit is going to be 800 to a thousand bucks. Like, is it, I think is it full, worth it? I think a full Gore-Tex snowmobiling suit, including gloves is closer to the 2000 range these days <laughs> wow so um if you include boots okay true so so uh is is there an advantage to spending more money in my opinion yes mm -hmm. do you have to i don't think so i think that if you uh are careful with your choices wool pants with 
a good uh, Gore-Tex layer over the top of them mm -hmm. are going to be almost as good as this. Mm -hmm. So, so there's degrees of this, but you get what you pay for. 100%. I agree. You get what you pay for. And when it comes to potentially your life up here at the Rubicon in the snow, um, it might be a great investment to get some really nice snow wheeling gear. I agree. And remember, this is part of your exit plan. We're going to talk about exit plan in another episode. Perfect. But this is part and parcel to your exit plan. No exit plan works if you're frozen. <laughs> That's very true. Cool. I like it. That's some really great ideas from uh, John here today. We've had some really cool talking points, a lot of different ways to cover your snow gear and your choices for snow equipment while we're out on the Rubicon. If you guys want to hear about how to do recovery equipment or some recovery gear ideas or camping ideas, make sure to go check out one of our other videos in the series here. And well, I guess with that, I'm Tyler. I'm John. And have fun wheeling and stay safe, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.